All right, welcome back to the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel. Mike Catalana, Dan Fates, I'm Jenna Cottrell. Before we get started talking about this Bills season-ending loss, 27-10 uh, to 10 to the Bengals, please be sure to like, comment, and as well as subscribe if you enjoy our stuff. All right, Mike, uh, Bengals came to town. Joe Burrow and company, I mean, they were dominant all day in this one. Yeah, they were the better team, no doubt about it. I, I think dominant is the right word. Yeah. yeah, I thought the Bills were lucky it was only 27-10. to 10. I thought both sides of the ball were bad. This was not one of those games where you turned it over five times, you made those kind of mistakes. <laughs> they protected the ball. Offensive just, line, just didn't defensive do anything with it. <laughs> line, both of them failed miserably in this game. I thought the Bengals did what they wanted. Honestly, I thought they sort of took the gas off a little bit. It could have been much worse than this. The Bills got a couple of calls, too, that kept yeah. it a little bit closer no no excuses when you lose like this this is when you have to understand that your team doesn't match up the Bengals handled mm -hmm. them they've been focused on the Chiefs how about being better than the Bengals first before you worry about the Chiefs and it was just they played bully ball yeah this was we went into this game talking about how the Bengals were without three of their starters on the offensive line Joe Burrow looked like it was seven on seven I, I mean it was so easy how comfortable he looked there wasn't a bill that got near him. Um, maybe the only time was when Boogie Basham jumped off sides and got a sack, which meant nothing. That was that was how frustrating this game was because you thought it was going to be – this was the opportunity for the defensive line to step up against an injured, injury-ridden Bengals offensive line, and we saw yeah. none of it. That was the thing. I felt like if you were to tell me, like, going into this game, one team was down three offensive <laughs> linemen starters, you would never have guessed it was Cincinnati. No, Josh he, was the one that was under mo the most pressure. He was yeah. running around, it felt like, all day. Yeah, and he made a few plays, right, yeah. when he had to. He got a couple to Shakir, and then I thought a key play in this game, whether they had a chance to come back, was when he went deep to Gabe Davis. Yeah. Gabe Davis got his hands on the ball. Now, look, the defender made a nice play after it hit Gabe in the hands you got to make that catch. They needed somebody to make a play. Now, don't think for a second I'm pinning this on Gabe Davis. Yeah, right. It was a deep ball. Yeah. you got to make that play. He's had issues during the year. But when a team is struggling like they are, they needed something big. It just didn't come. And Jenna, the players talked about, and Matt Milano talked about a lack of juice. Yeah. Mitch Morris talked about the same thing, like energy. You know, we joke all the time about find a way, find a way. They didn't come close to finding a way today. They never bounced back and really slowed down and made the Bengals uncomfortable the entire day. Uh, to me, it's like two things, uh, execution and energy, and there really was neither of that on, on for the Bills in this game. It was a weird kind of energy, too, in the stadium. Like It felt yeah. very flat from the beginning when the Bengals started out their the, the opening series going down with the touchdown. Yep. It just felt like they were on their feet. It was so flat all day long, and it almost seemed like – like the Bills were so encumbered by, is that a word? Yeah, yeah, it's um, a good one. Okay, by the footing and by the snow, and it felt like the Bengals were just full speed ahead. It was just, it was so perplexing to watch because it just felt like you're like, guys, this is this is the divisional round of the playoffs. You're at home, and it just it felt like nothing could get started. I, I don't. Again, we don't make excuses. Sean McDermott didn't. Sean McDermott didn't make excuses either. This was a team that looked emotionally drained. This, yeah, this was a team that had. So many ups and downs yeah. in the season, it just felt like they couldn't. I know I talked about it one time, about flipping the switch, yeah. right? It just didn't seem like when they flipped that switch. And to hear Matt Milano, who really doesn't talk all that much, talk about no juice, no energy, they couldn't find any way to swing momentum back. Yeah. They just seemed like a team that was a little drained. I, I agree. And I feel like that says a lot about a guy saying that who normally doesn't yeah. really talk that much. And I think it was obvious on the field here today. But that is just something that we're so not used to seeing. No. And especially in a moment like this when yep. the stage was set for you. You know, we were talking about Atlanta, all this stuff. And it yeah. was just... It was like, wow, it, it, it's tough because this is such a bad loss. It is. And it's the one you're going to think about. Yeah, I mean, it's a home loss. It's a divisional round where they lost last year. Ten points Yeah, at ten home. points, 27 to 10. I mean, and it wasn't that close. That's what I keep getting at. Yeah. If you're sitting at home and you're blaming any one thing, I would say you're wrong. Josh Allen wasn't Correct. great today, okay. but good, he wasn't good great. Point. That actually brings up something I saw yeah. on Twitter, and it said, however sad you are is equated to how um, – like surprised you are that the Bills lost in yeah. terms of like there were cracks all season and you know having yes. something like this it, it do you know what I'm saying I, exactly and at each time when they had a crack when the secondary wasn't strong somebody made something look at the way they even lost the three games they did yeah but they found a way 
This game, none of that. They didn't have yeah. the energy. And I'm going to say this. I'm not – they didn't lose the game strictly because of coaching. That is an easy thing to just say coaching, coaching. Yeah. Because the players do have to execute what's yeah. out there. But I see no creativity on the offense. I think the defense – didn't know what they wanted to be in this one. Maybe yeah. they thought they were going to get more pressure with four. Yeah. When they came with pressure, you guys all saw the one play. They come with pressure, and Trey White's playing six yards off of it was Jamar nine Chase. Yards off on, it was on a third and three. Yeah, and yeah. you give up the first down. I'm like, what's the plan here, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Either go all out, and it's hard to blitz him. Burrow is so calm, so smooth. So it's calm. just the way he plays. But they never made them uncomfortable. That's where I pin this on coaching because there has to be a time. Offensively, they're easy to defend. The reason they're yeah. not easy to defend is Josh Allen. Yeah. When he's Josh Allen. But their plan is rudimentary. They don't. They are not creative. Yeah. They are missing something. And it's going to be addressed in the offseason. It has to be because – their offensive line isn't good enough. Their skill guys aren't good enough. Yeah. And the coaching's not good enough. Yeah. It was, a, there's a big difference. I heard Dan Orlovsky talk about it between calling plays and designing plays. Yes. It just seemed like there was nothing, there was no answer to, I know we joke around second half adjustments. There was no answer. Yeah. And look, Josh was under constant pressure. And whereas we saw Joe Burrow, knowing that he was down three offensive linemen, they had a plan. Let's get the ball out. Let's get the ball out quick. Yeah. And man. It hurts me to say this. Burrow gave off Brady vibes today. I could see that. Yeah. Just so, Poise, control, so, death by paper cuts, all that moved stuff. Moved around enough in the pocket, yeah, even yeah. the few times he got there. But it was pinpoint accuracy. It was take what the defense gives you. And yeah. it was every single time there was a guy open, yeah. he found him. Yeah. And you would have maybe noticed this on the field as you're right down there today. Um, simple things. They go to the defensive line, and you see the Bills make an adjustment. Where they, you know, say Tremaine would come over to his D lineman and shift them over. And Burrow would make a call. Boom, yep. they ran it the other yep. way, eight yep. yards. Yep. Now, I'm simplifying what they were doing. Whatever they did, he was ready for it. Yeah. Calmly made a change. Calm. And they ran it down their throat. Now, the numbers aren't like what the Eagles did to the Giants. It's not wasn't that. No. It was like six yards, seven yards, easily. How many times did they have second and two oh, in this game? It just felt like they couldn't stop the bleeding. Yeah. And it, then yeah. it and would have almost been better off to give huge big agreed. plays and get the ball back because yeah. they just walked down the field. It was sad at some points in this one. And like yeah. walking in between both sides of the field, you know, one end zone to another, walking by the bench and ju guys just like hanging their hats. Yep. And that was, <laughs> that was in the second quarter. Yeah. And then look at the way it ends. Right, I mean Jordan Poyer injured. Oh, that uh, was that play happened right in front of me. That yeah. was scary. It is, and so that you know noise. we don't know about mm -hmm. him going forward. I mean Trey White. I mean look, it's a year past the surgery. Yep. A lot of guys it takes a little while. Yeah. Think the Bills better hope that's the case because he doesn't look like the elite player he's been in the past. Yeah. And that's an issue because the secondary is an issue. They yeah. have a couple of younger players, showed some encouraging things, but they went from that being a full-on strength of this it's, team. It's insane how much that changes. And then we don't know what's going to happen with Poyer. We don't know how Hyde comes back, yeah. and we don't know how Trey White comes back. So yeah. just one I'm, of the many issues. To me, I'm not even as worried as much about the defense as yeah. I am the offense. Yeah, I, yeah, I, just I think don't, that's fair. I just don't know where – you, you have to continue to put pieces in weapons around Josh Allen. You, yeah. you invest a quarter of a billion dollars in him, and right now Isaiah McKenzie's not an, a true number three in the mm -hmm. slot. Gabe Davis is not a true number two. Yeah, Dawson Knox played really well down the stretch, but where was the running game? Where was the offense? Oh, this is so appropriate, isn't it? Wow, they just turned out the lights Wow! at the stadium. <laughs> I guess we should take a step closer so you can see us. Are we still there? We can, yeah. you, you how about, see. hold this for a second. <laughs> okay. Hold this. Matt <laughs> <laughs> but how about this? How, oh, I, oh. Look You're at that. You're slipping. You're scared. They scaring must have me. looked down and seen All us right, here. Let's take, let's take a step back. back. Oh, my God. Hold this. I'm going to okay, make it. Okay, yeah. Longer. How um, how fitting is this, Wow, that honestly feels. Did you call that apropos? Apropos? Oh, look at this. I don't. Look at this. Yes. I don't know what that means. <laughs> it's French. <laughs> Speaking of French, appropriate. Finn. How about so this? That? Felt like Finn. Yeah. I believe it's and French for appropriate. Oh, okay. All right. We learned something every day. What was the word day. you used earlier? Incumbent. Or, no, no, encumbered. Encumbered. Yeah. Wow. And one other thing I think incumbent. we do have to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> we tried. One other thing I think we do have to talk about is yeah. Stefan Dix. Yeah. Um, just the way that we all saw what, what interactions on the sidelines. Um, and then kind of the summary of what happened after the game. 
kind of stormed out of the locker room yeah. okay. before the media could get in. Yeah, yeah. I want to say what I saw, and then I want to hear what yeah. you guys okay. saw. So on the field, you could see obvious frustration. I mean, some longer throws that Josh was kind of looking off from him. Diggs was frustrated. A couple throws, you know, Allen would find Singletary, and you saw Diggs running free down the sideline and just – Diggs, one of those plays right in the end, was just like walking off, and he just – he literally didn't even turn around. He just kept walking and then finally like came back around. But it was – you could tell the obvious frustration, but obviously I didn't yeah. even realize what well, had happened. On the broadcast, you yeah. see him standing in front of Allen and Joe Brady on the sidelines, and he's just yelling has with his arms. arms out. Yeah. And look, I've stuck up for him a lot this year, but you've started to see little bits of this mm -hmm. where you'd see him frustrated. We saw it in Detroit a couple mm -hmm. of times. Yeah. You saw it in games. And I get it. This is the last game of the year. I get the level of frustration. But I don't like a guy trying to show up a quarterback who's thrown me the ball 180 yeah. times this year, whatever it is. And I shouldn't say trying to show him up. I get the frustration. Yeah. But I think Josh Allen was doing whatever. If, if Diggs could look in the backfield and see what Allen was dealing with yeah. half the time, maybe you'd feel differently. I'll forgive a little bit of it, but Dan, after the game, you're supposed to be a captain. You're one of those guys, one of the leaders of the team, and he leaves before he gets a chance to talk. Before he gets to talk to the media, apparently Duke Johnson went, grabbed them. They went back in the locker room for another minute or two and then left. Sean McDermott did clarify that Diggs was in the locker room when he addressed the team, and McDermott saying, quote, that is all that matters. Yeah. I get it. He says he's a competitor. He goes, Emotional, I, wouldn't yeah. I, I wouldn't want a guy that's not hurting right now. All of those things are, are true. And again, I, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I really don't. But the optics aren't great. And let me just add one thing quickly here. I, it's not about him talking to us. You know, Diggs only talks after some games and whatever it is, and he's good. It's talking because your teammates have to talk about what went yep. on. And we went in the locker room. We talked to some players. Other guys, Ed Oliver, very politely declined. He said, I would rather not do it and whatever. Same with Kyrie Elam. Yeah, okay. That's fine. That's it wasn't, okay. It's not that. Yeah. You know, we're looking for guys who would like to talk. It's the end of the season. Yep. It, it, you can say that. And you, you can just say, no, I don't want to talk. I mean, yeah. it's fine. But I think when you do have to speak, somebody speaks for this team. Josh Allen had to speak. Mitch yeah. Morris spoke. It makes Deion it Dawkins a, it spoke. It makes it into a thing when it, it yes. doesn't. Yes, agree. And it's everything. And that's the thing. The game just ended. Everything's very fresh. But it's not the best optical look no. when a guy leaves like that. Obviously, well, there is a lot of frustration, but it it. it it makes you question, like, what is that dynamic The like? bigger thing is on the field. Yeah. The Agreed. bigger thing is that way with your quarterback when he's frustrated. So they haven't had that publicly. That was pretty bad today. We will yeah. hear. The, they'll wrap up locker room in the next two or three days. We'll hear from Sean McDermott. We'll hear from Brandon Bean. Yeah. What I, what I want to know is what, Von Miller doesn't change this game. Von no. Miller. Yeah. He – he well, doesn't. he helps. He, I mean, Micah he Hyde helps. Von Miller helps. Okay. Those guys help. But, again, you're talking about the Bengals played without three of their offensive Correct. linemen. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that doesn't so – yes, that where, doesn't change everything. It's not, I'm yeah. looking at, I, and I remember it's I not the cure-all. Like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I remember tweeting saying, like, Rousseau, Oliver, Boogie, so, like, somebody do something. Yeah. And, again, they've invested so much into the defensive so line. So much. This felt like the epitome of the time when they could shine. Epinesa, those guys – and they were nowhere to be found. Jordan Phillips, Shaq. Nowhere they've invested to be found. draft picks. They've invested so much money. Yep. You had an opportunity. And again, I understand Von wasn't playing. Von doesn't single handedly change this game. No. Yeah. That's it's a bad. lot of questions. It is. And it's roster. And this is on Brandon Bean now. He's got a lot of work to do this offseason. Yeah. A lot. And I think it starts with the offense. I yeah. absolutely do. Because you yeah. got Josh Allen, and, who's a star. And you got to surround him. You just see how good the AFC is and, and what it's going to take. And I mean, obviously, the Bengals have Joe Burrow, the Chiefs have Patrick Mahomes. What it's going to take to even get to a Super Bowl. Obviously, that's the end goal of this team, but it is going to be quite a tough, difficult road. And I feel like we talked earlier, you put so much pressure on trying to chase the Chiefs, and now it's like, well, mm -hmm. yeah. you got to look out for Cincinnati, too. They won 14 games. They won their division. Yeah. Ten straight wins. This was a step back. Oh, you're talking about the Bills. Sorry. They're for the Bills. Talking. Yeah. This yeah. was a oh, step yeah. back. Yeah, this was. It's a step back. There's no question. Because they end this season. <sighs> progress is not linear. No, it's <laughs> no, but they've not. they taken <laughs> three <laughs> little mini steps back from yeah, AFC know. Championship game to now two divisional losses. One and being a divisional loss. And that, this one at home. Yep. It's the home. It's, it's the home. home. And it's the something. home and ten points Honestly, for me. there's nothing quite as frustrating as 13 seconds was. That was a play. That was play a few plays at yeah. the end when your yeah. quarterback played yeah. lights out and all yeah. those things. You should have won. 
this is worse because this is at the core of who they are. Doesn't yeah. mean they can't fix things. Yeah. You still Locked. start out with 17 next year, but they got a lot to and fix. And I think that goes to show, too, like after that, that 13 seconds game in Kansas City, I was so upset because it was like so shocking because they were yeah. right there. Whereas this game, it's like. This was, this was like 13 seconds for 60 minutes. <laughs> no, stop. Just it was waiting. so different. Yeah, it, it was, was very so different. different. It, it was, was like that. It was like the AFC Championship. You against thought the, Chiefs. the Bills were the better team at the end of that game because they had Allen and they did everything right Good to win point. that game. Yeah, I retract today. My and this isn't even just the Bengals. This is just like, look, they struggled with the Dolphins. They struggled yeah. with the Patriots late. There were cracks, and people sometimes get mad and they say, "Well, they're winning. They're winning." We kept saying, "When it happens, it happens." Well, it happened today. I literally said that last week, and guys were like, eh, they just got to pick up a win. Me, me, me. No, we said this is who they were. Yeah, this is who they are. Were you like, Do you we know? talk like that? <laughs> In my head, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you got to pick up a win. Okay. Um, Clip that. <laughs> For Dan Cottrell. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Fates and Dan Cottrell. <laughs> Jenna Catalano, we're done. <laughs> Catalano. <laughs> yeah. Um, Okay, a little bit of brevity. We're trying with the, this fancy hey, words. Listen, they, um, they got answers. Excuse me. Levity. Brevity levity is short. Oh, well, we got, this is not were, brevity. <laughs> Dang it. Like I, I actually am a smart person. <laughs> it's not doing myself. Well, you were good with the vocabulary. Yeah. The vocabulary <laughs> early. There will be more to talk about this down the road, but yeah. if there is to be big changes on this offense, I think they happen sooner rather than later. We can deal with that in another day, but offensive coordinators will be hired. Oh, yeah. Yes. Or fired. I think Ken Dorsey's. But what do you do? In the crosshairs at the moment. I agree. We, we can yeah. talk about Frank it. Frank Wright. Okay. okay. We'll see. We'll see. Ooh, what a way to end. Wow. A little teaser. Dun, dun, dun. We'll, have plenty, <laughs> we'll have plenty more coverage, though. There'll be locker clean out day. Yeah. We'll hear more from the 22,000 subscribers. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we're, we not, we're not even you. close to done. Appreciate no. you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. You look like a boy band member. <laughs> okay. For Dan. <laughs> And Mike, I'm Jenna. Um, thank you for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy our content. And thanks for sticking with us this season. Well, like we said, we'll have plenty more as uh, the Bills football offseason begins. Uh, but thanks for joining us here on Buffalo Plus.